All right, if you've seen the first video, we kind of talked about how to program and organize your files and kind of how the whole canvas and everything operates. Now let's actually get into some action here. So what we're going to be doing is working on moving the robot. So we're going to be focusing just on the motors. And so if you haven't built your basic robot, go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter if you use Damien Key's model or if you use the booklet that comes with the robot. Most likely you're going to be using that. Um, but get that belt and follow those directions. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But once it's built, we're going to take a look at how to actually get it operational. And so the way programs work is that they run the blocks one block at a time, beginning with the first block on the left. And then each program block has one or more what they call modes or settings. And so let's go ahead and talk about that here a little bit. So the first thing we're going to work on is using the move steering block. There's two ways to move your motors. There's a move tank and move steering and we're going to focus on move steering. So go ahead and drag that up to your canvas now. This is going to be the first option that is um, that the robot's going to do once we download it. And I'm actually, before I move any further, I'm going to change the name of this. Um, I'm just going to call it straight because we're just going to be going in a straight line. Now, this big option here that I have highlighted is what's considered the mode. We can change the mode of the programming for this particular motor uh, because that's what this block is. The rest of these, the other four options in this case, are the settings. Each program block, depending on what you use, will have a different number of settings and it also may depend on which mode you use. So what's going to happen is this is going to control the movement of the robot's motors. So here's how it works. Really, really pretty simple. This mode here, we can choose. If we click it one time, we can go to off. Basically, it's going to turn the motors completely off. Nothing is going to happen. If we go on, it's going to switch on the motors. And in this case, it's just going to be infinite. It's going to keep going until something triggers the next block. On for seconds, turns the motors on for a set amount of time. So say you want to go straight for three seconds, you can program that way. This one here is for degrees. This is a specified number of degrees of rotation, and then it's going to stop once it does that. And then rotations is the number of rotations. So we have those options as we go ahead and program. Now when looking at this, we're going to go ahead and move to rotations for now. You can see how my option changed there. This setting here is the steering. So right now it's not going to do, it's just going to go straight, excuse me. This one here is a power. This is how fast basically the robot's going to move depending on the motors. And this is for how long of the rotations. So as we take a look at this, if we were to switch this over here to seconds, you can see my settings change here uh, where now I would program over here and put how much time I want it to move. So you can kind of play around that on your own. What's going to happen um, if we go ahead and take a look at this? Actually, let's move over here to um, degrees because I think sometimes that's a little easier. I can talk about a troubleshoot that every student runs into. It's going to allow us to take a look at how many degrees for the motors. So 360 degrees is equal to one rotation. So you can see it's 360 degrees here. If I were to move this to rotation, it's going to convert it to one. So it's the same thing. And sometimes that's important to point out um, to students here as you work through. When you're going and working with this, um, it's important that you keep going. So if I were to just download this program right now and run on my robot, my robot wheels would go one complete rotation and then it would stop because there's nothing next. If there was another block, it would then follow that. So if I wanted to make this a little more complicated, well not complicated, but I could put this stop program in here. So if I were to run my mission, it would start here, it would go one rotation and then stop. But that's not gonna really be necessary at this point. So the first challenge that you have is to, I would just get down two pieces of tape, in which I'll show you here in just a second. And your goal is to get your robot to start on one piece of tape and have at least one wheel end up on the other piece of tape, just simply using one block here. If you need to go backwards, you just move your power to negative. So negative would be going backwards, spinning the, the motors 
in the opposite direction. And you can see that the arrow changed here. You can also adjust this if you didn't want to go straight. So you can see, I moved this back to go forward. It's easier to understand here a little bit. That when we see this, you can see how my robot's going to change direction. And so by playing around with this a little bit, you're going to be able to see a bunch of different options. So this here is the power simply going completely straight. If I were to move this to the negative, we would go backwards. Okay. If I were to keep it like that, and we were to keep going, all right. If I were to make this negative, we'd be going forward again because we're going a negative rotation on a negative speed. Two negatives make a positive. Think back to your math there. You know, I could go back and adjust this back the way I want. And say I want to have a slight turn to the right, you can see that that's what's happening. What's going to happen? It's going to slow the power in one motor and speed the other one up to go ahead and make that turn. And then I can adjust that the other way. The more the turn, the more of the um, one motor slowing down, the other powering up. These here are the ports. So you always want to make sure that your ports are the same as what you're plugged into on your brick. And that really is the gist of programming at this point in time. The one little glitch that happens every year with almost every student that gets going with the robot is say that you challenge your kids to turn 90 degrees. What your students will do, most likely if you don't tell them, is they will type in this. And they will type in 90 degrees right here. That's not going to have your robot turn 90 degrees. And this is a really good, I always use it as kind of like a checkpoint to see how kids are understanding the programming. What that's going to do is going to turn the motors 90 degrees, so one quarter of a turn, not 90 degrees in terms of like a right angle like, like we're thinking of. So they're going to have to adjust that degree here. And remember that every robot's different depending on its traction, the size of the wheels, the weight, weight distribution, all that. So it's all going to be varied just a little bit. So this is something... I've given you two challenges, and I will go ahead and uh, show you how the robots operate with the follow-up program in the next video. But challenge one would be to move your lay down two pieces of tape, start on one piece of tape, get your robot to move forward and stop on the piece of tape in front of it. The next one, challenge your students to do the same thing, but when it gets to the tape, turn 90 degrees and see if they can figure that out. Um, and this is a good little gauge, and I, I guarantee most will probably program it just like this, which is not the right answer. If you found this useful and helpful, please like it, subscribe to the channel. If you have questions or the things that you would like to see, please let me know, and I will continue to add these tutorial videos uh, when I have the time moving towards more complex programs, but this is the next step. So take some time, get your robots going. I'll make the video, you make a video yourself and share it in the comments, you'll email me a link and I'll go ahead and post it um, on my tutorial page on coffeeforthebrain.com. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.